is Brock from Ozzy Van Man on YouTube. And if you're looking for fit for expedition, well, you found him. Hey guys, this is Greg with Fit for Expedition. I have a question for you today. Oh wait, hang on a second. I gotta turn the air conditioner off. Why on the set? I don't like turning the air conditioner off because it's hot. It's probably high 80s outside. And then those of you who live in RVs or travel a lot in RVs, trailers, utility trailers, box trucks, vans, whatever, you know how hot it can get if you don't have some airflow. I had the AC on do have my vent fan up front. So that kind of feeds into what I was gonna talk about today. Things that you need when you're traveling, either part-time, full-time, whatever you're doing, consider yourself a nomad. These are some things that you need. I have this AC unit right here. It's a Frigidaire. It uses 600 watts per hour. It's 5,000 BTU in air conditioner. It has a soft start, which is important for your electrical system. My power stations are that are connected to this are 4,000 watts. A little bit more than 4,000 watts, like 4,032. You can figure out what that is in amp hours. I'll let you do the math. That's for another video. But right now, we're just gonna talk watts. So that uses 600 watts an hour. Well, if my power stations are combined 4,032 watts, and I got another 1,000, but they're not connected to the system. They're a different system connected to some other uh, things that I use. If you have 4,000 watts and you have 600 watts of power being used for the AC, well, simple math, that's six and a half hours basically and you're at, you're at 4,000 watts. So you can run it for six and a half hours. Now, I do have 1140, 1140 watts of solar on the roof, but only 780 watts go to this particular system. So during the day, and you know that no solar panels are not 100%, they don't bring in 100% power all the time. So at 780 watts, and mine are bifacial, they're, they're made by Canadian solar, but they're not mounted that far from the ceiling. I mean, they're about, I mean, from the roof, they're about maybe six inches from the roof. At the highest point, my roof is curved from the middle, so it it's kind of slips down like this. So on the edge, it's probably picking up a little bit of power, but it's not really set up for the bifacial usage, I guess I would call it. And so, so I, I haven't really set it up that way. But at 780 watts, going into my 4,000 watt system, and at 600 watts of AC, and another 30 to 40 watts for my refrigerator per hour, and you know, if I'm using my Starlink, well, that's over 100 watts an hour, and then probably close to 150 combined with the Roku and the television and all that. So. And the lights, well, the lights don't really amount to much. I mean, we're talking about, you know, seven watts, five to seven watts fans. The fans I use are five to seven watts. So, you know, those, I don't even have to figure those in because it's such low usage. But it will not pick up 100% solar ever, and it won't pick up 80 to 90%, which is about what it usually does, except for probably eight hours worth of solar at 80 to 90%. And then it's going to drop off measurably and in the early morning, it's going to be much lower as far as wattage. That's important to, to keep in mind. When I'm plugged in, I do have that capability to just pass through power through the plug-in, but it also charges my system so I can bring it back up to 100%. So if I'm plugged in, man, I can run AC day and night, no problem. Otherwise, forget about it. Now, I will tell you, it's getting hot in here right now uh, since I'm not running the AC. Okay, so that's important. That's very important for when you're camping in higher temperatures. You know what else is cool? Doing urban stealth camping. This is on the back in a box. That's on the roof. They don't make much noise. You know, the, and when I say that, I'm talking about that. So that's on the roof. It's not making much noise. That's great because people have are less likely to know that you're in the truck. I've never had a knock on the door. I do have a few windows on the truck, but for the most part, it looks like a business vehicle. I eventually plan to cover those windows with uh, advertising art for a fictitious company on one side, and on the other side for Fit for Expedition. So if I'm out in Quartzsite or at a meetup or something like that, I can turn them around, snap them on the other way, and hey, that's Fit for Expedition, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the air back on, but I want to show you a few more things. Well, one thing I wanted to show you, I probably should show you right now, is the amount of different types of lighting that I have. Okay, so, this is a, you might have seen these. They're pretty cool. I mean, they're pretty inexpensive on Amazon. I don't have a link for them or anything. But you open them up, 
and by how far you open it is how much light it gives out. So those are pretty great, I got like four of those. Those take three double A's each, and this just screws back on to seal it up. Then I've got this light right here. I got two of these, one in the back and one in the front up there right by the vent. Those take about six watts an hour, so pretty low level. Okay, these are, these are 120 volt. These are 120 volt also. I bought these at Ikea a long time ago, but you can find other lights. They don't have these ones anymore, but you can find other lights. Let's get that glare out of there. You can buy other lights that are similar to that at Ikea. I bought those like 25, 30 years ago. And then I have these puck lights, and we've all seen these puck lights. They also take three AA batteries, and they just turn on that simply. I have one there. I have one in my bathroom. And I have a couple in the kitchen. So then I've got these lights, and these are great for working. Put out a lot of light, and for us, it's like right over the desk, right over the counter here, where we can sit, play games, eat, work, whatever. And watch this, so that's on a lower level. So you have two different lights. You have white light, and then I guess that's supposed to be natural light, I'm not really sure, but I always use them both at the same time. Let me think if there's any more lights in here. I mean, we've got obviously a flashlight. Some might call it a torch. I think it depends on what country you're from. I'll show you how I charge my batteries also. And this is what we use. We just put a regular kind of home battery charger and I mounted it to this wall with some alien tape. Really good stuff. You can find, just look it up that way, you can find it. And then, oh, there's one of those puck lights. Okay, so this is our other, our backup power. This isn't our main power system, but I've plugged in the battery charger right here. And so we always have this ability to plug in batteries. And speaking of charging batteries, that's why I want to talk to you. That's the most important thing about today's video. Now we also have these smaller chargers that you just power from the USB cord and then you can carry these around with you, charge your phone, charge whatever it takes, a USB connection, and you can charge that so you can carry those with you. We got a few of those. There's the ability to charge devices and things. And then, like I said, here's the ability to charge batteries. This definitely falls under the line of preparedness. And what's cool about this this is a product that the good people at U UIBI sent me. And you can see it's a jump, well, let's get the glare out. It's a jump starter with power bank. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look. It comes in this awesome case. When I got it, it was charged to, I don't know, like 81 or 82%. I charged it up to 100%, which I think is always pretty much recommended. So let's look at this end. Those are your basic USB kind of connectors. I mean, we'd all agree on that. Well, you can charge things from those connectors. So it's got the it's got the USB-C and then it's got two USB plugs and they are both out, out one and out two. So this comes with the USB-C to USB-C and it also comes with the USB to USB-C. So this plugs in, push that in, and there you go. And it's, char it's able to charge now. The red is for power and the green is for inaction. Here's the power button. You can see it shows you real big here. 100%. It's 100% charged. And it's putting out 0%. This jump starter is a 2500 amp 12 volt starter. Jump starter is primarily used for starting a car, which is designed to generate a high rate of battery current allowing for the instant starting of a vehicle. You can use those smaller USB ports to charge phones and things like that, smaller devices. But if you're gonna be starting a car, this is just a one time boom. I don't know how much power it uses, probably uses a lot of power. And then you gotta charge it up again. We've been talking a lot about charging and batteries and lighting and all that kind of stuff today. Well, guess what? This has a light too. So let me show you how it hooks up to a car battery, but we're not gonna use it because my car battery, well, my box truck battery, all my cars are fully charged. I actually checked my uh, 61 Falcon wagon because I noticed when I took the cover off this morning that the taillights were on. 
because the lighting switch was just pulled on just a little tiny bit. So it didn't have the front headlights on, but it had the taillights on. So I thought, well, maybe the battery's not charged because I've been gone for five days. Well, that battery's pretty good because it didn't kill the battery. So I can't do that. So let's go ahead and take it out. I'll just at least show you how it hooks up. Most people have hooked up a battery to battery cables, got a jump or giving someone jump or whatever. And that's basically what we're talking about here. I showed you where the power button was already. I showed you how to plug these in already. And then you just hook up your positive and negative. Okay, so you're gonna hook up your negative or your ground. And then you're gonna hook up your positive. We are gonna do it. So there you go. Actually says in action. And I just tried to click and it gave, it's giving it a charge right now. But that is how it hooks up. Very simple. Great product. Like I said, 2,500 amps. So it should be enough for most of you, for your RVs, your classic cars, etc. And, well right there it says it's good for motorcycles, cars, trucks, vans and snowmobiles in the description you'll see a link for this product how you can purchase it on amazon and get one for yourself now i have one for each of my vehicles hey if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you have a comment or a question about this product uh please leave a comment in the comment section I will definitely get back to you and I'll try to answer your questions or point you in the right direction. If you're new here or if you just haven't done it yet, think about subscribing and hit that little bell for notifications. See you next time.